What's going on everybody, Kalipas Tech here coming back at you with another video. In this video, I'm going to be giving you my full review of the Motorola Moto G 5G 2023. Now as always, if you end up wanting to learn more about this phone, definitely check out the description where I am linking to several other videos about it, as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. But with that being said, Let's get into it. So with the Moto G 5G 2023, as the name implies, this phone is the successor to last year's Moto G 5G 2022. And just like the predecessor, the Moto G 5G 2023 is still Motorola's most affordable 5G phone. Now with this device, we're getting a 6.5 inch 120Hz IPS LCD display with a 720p resolution, a PPI of 270, and a 20x9 aspect ratio. So on one hand, not really the best display. I feel like at this point in 2023, a 720p resolution, while not being terrible, is still not really ideal if you're consuming a lot of content, but for what it is, it does look pretty decent. Also at 6.5 inches, the display is decently large, so if you're doing stuff like reading, for example, you will get a pretty good experience. And with the 20 by 9 aspect ratio, we are getting a taller, more narrow form factor here. So if you're in landscape mode, doing something like watching videos or looking at photos, you will get a nice immersive experience. Things will look a bit more cinematic. And then if you're doing something like reading, browsing the web, using social media, stuff like that, with a form factor like this, you can fit a good amount of content on the screen without having to scroll too much. Also with a 120Hz refresh rate, the movement on the screen is going to be a bit faster and smoother, and this makes the phone feel a bit more premium to use. So. In general, again, definitely not a bad display, but if you're really going to be on your phone a lot consuming lots of content like videos, for example, where the image quality is a bit more important, then in that case, I do think you can do better because again, at this point in 2023, a 720p resolution is still really not ideal. But at the end of the day, I feel like that's really the only drawback I see here. So if you're maybe not really consuming a ton of content, but maybe you're watching the occasional video every now and then, or using social media, browsing the web, stuff like that, despite not being the best display out there, for what it is, it will at least get the job done. Now for storage, with the Moto G 5G 2023, we're getting 128 gigabytes of internal storage with micro SD card expansion, so definitely plenty of storage here. Sure, compared to last year's version, at least with the unlocked version, the Moto G 5G 2022 had, I think, 200. 156, so that is quite a bit more, but at the same time, I feel like for the people this phone is really meant for, someone looking for more of an entry level phone for more basic activities, it will get the job done because after all, for the average user, 128 gigabytes will be plenty of storage. So if you really are a power user, then in general, this phone is probably not meant for you. But I do think for most people looking for a phone like this, the storage on this phone will be perfectly fine. And then again, this phone does support micro SD card expansion too. So if you have lots of photos and videos, for example, you can always offload that stuff onto a micro SD card, and that will definitely make a difference. Now for security features, with the Moto G 5G 2023, this phone does have face unlock, and a fingerprint scanner right here on the power key. So definitely great to have both options. But real quick, let's give the fingerprint scanner a try. There we go, one more time. And there we go. So as you can see, real fast and responsive, no issues at all. And again, remember, this phone does have face unlock too, so if you wanna use that instead, you always can. Now taking a look at the camera setup here, with the Moto G 5G, up front, we got a real nice looking hole punch design for the selfie camera. This camera is eight megapixels. And on the back, we got a dual camera setup with a 48 megapixel main camera and a 2 megapixel macro camera. Now, I honestly have mixed feelings about the camera here because on one hand, I have found the actual photo quality to be pretty good. So if you're taking normal pictures or maybe using portrait mode, it will definitely get the job done. And speaking of portrait mode, I do want to point out that even though this phone doesn't have a dedicated depth sensing camera, it really is just built into the main camera. At this point in 2023, lots of manufacturers have been doing that, so it doesn't really make a difference. And with this phone, portrait mode does work perfectly fine. But again, overall I do think the photo quality here is really good but the real disappointing thing here is unfortunately with the Moto G 5G we're not getting an ultra wide camera and I feel like at this point in 2023 while still not being exactly an expectation per se it is a real common feature that is nice to have too so if you're looking for maybe a wider variety of features then you might be a little disappointed here but at least the camera setup here really isn't too bad and then also keep in mind for video with the Moto G 5G this phone does have a max recording quality of 1080p in both the rear and front cameras so no 4k here unfortunately but keep in mind, if you do want 4K video, the Moto G Stylus 5G 2023 actually can record 4K videos, which I was really not expecting. So if you do want that feature, definitely keep this in mind. Now to give you an idea of what this camera can do, here are some pictures taken with the Moto G 5G 2023. So again, in general, I do think the photo quality here is really good, and for most people, I do think it will get the job done. For stuff like social media, sending photos to friends and family, or maybe using 
Snapchat, for example, for that kind of use, the Moto G 5G will definitely get the job done, but if you are coming from maybe an older but higher end device, those phones, despite being older, are still going to be quite a bit better than this. So if your expectations are a bit higher, then you might be a bit disappointed, but Honestly, for an entry-level 5G phone, I do think the photo quality here is really just as good as you could possibly expect. So for most people, again, I do think it will get the job done. Now for the RAM and processor, with the Moto G 5G 2023, we are getting 4GB of RAM with the Qualcomm Snapdragon 480 Plus 5G processor. Now when it comes to overall performance, on one hand, this phone is definitely not slow, so in general, if you're just using the phone as a phone or maybe doing stuff like web browsing, social media, watching videos every now and then, and maybe some light mobile gaming, again, it will get the job done and most people will have a pretty good experience. But if you are gonna be on your phone a lot, maybe you're a bit more of a power user or maybe you're doing more demanding activities like high performance mobile gaming or editing a video or something like that, for that kind of use, you probably are gonna wanna go with something a bit faster. But in general, despite maybe not being exceptionally fast or anything, for more basic activities, I do think this phone will be plenty fast enough and in my experience I haven't had any lagging or slowdowns or anything like that so overall when it comes to performance I really have no complaints here now I did run a benchmark test on this phone using Geekbench 6 and here are the results I got so what I recommend doing is running this test on your current phone and then comparing your results to these and that's gonna give you a better idea of whether or not this phone will be a performance upgrade for you because of course depending on what you're coming from it may or may not be if again you're coming from an older but higher-end device then definitely not it's not gonna be an upgrade at at all. In fact, it'll probably be quite a downgrade, but if you're coming from maybe a lower end device, then it could be a pretty solid upgrade. But in general, I do want to point out that compared to most other 5G phones around this general sub $300 price range, it's really not that special. Again, it's not slow per se, but compared to something like a Samsung Galaxy A14 5G, for example, the performance is really going to be around the same level. And then compared to any kind of mid-range phone like an A54 5G or a Moto G Stylus 5G 2023, those phones are going to be significantly faster faster and honestly the price difference isn't really that huge so if you are maybe a bit more focused on performance then I do think you can do better but again if you're not really that concerned and you really just need something reliable that works then this phone will get the job done perfectly fine now for the battery with the Moto G 5G 2023 we're getting a 5000 milliamp hour battery this supports 15 watt fast charging so definitely a great battery here now I will admit on one hand the fast charging isn't really that great but in this price range when it comes to really entry level 5G phones you're probably not going to do any better anyway and as long as you're not trying to charge your phone up insanely fast or anything it will at least get the job done and of course with a 5000 milliamp hour battery this is a really large battery so with this phone you can't expect to get great battery life per charge and then down the road as the battery degrades which all batteries do with this phone you're not going to notice it nearly as quickly as you would with a much smaller battery so if you like to get one phone and keep it for a longer time without having to replace it then this phone will be great for that but keep in mind at this point in 2023 despite again being a really good battery a 5000 milliamp hour battery is really not uncommon by any means in fact at this point when it comes to a phone like this i'd be surprised if it didn't have one so don't get me wrong it still is great but if you're really concerned with battery life then keep in mind most phones nowadays are pretty much interchangeable they're all going to be roughly the same when it comes to battery life so i personally wouldn't really make a decision based on that but just be aware if you are looking for a phone that has good battery life like many others this phone will be a good choice now for the software the Moto G 5G 2023 does have Android 13, so definitely nice to see. But keep in mind, we are really just months away from Android 14. In fact, I've heard some phones already have it, so if you're really hoping to get the latest version of Android, then you might be disappointed here because knowing Motorola, their updates are kind of unpredictable, so although I do think this phone will eventually get Android 14, I don't know when it will, so again, if that really is important to you, then you might want to get something else, but in general, we are still really early when it comes to Android 14, so seeing Android Android 13 here is not a bad thing by any means. Now when it comes to other features, unfortunately with this phone, we're not getting NFC, which honestly is pretty disappointing seeing as pretty much every other entry level 5G phone will have NFC, so if you do like to use tap and pay, you will want to get something else, but I know of course not everyone uses tap and pay, so this may or may not really matter. Now taking a look at the overall design, I definitely do think this is a really nice looking phone and compared to its predecessor, I do think the Moto G 5G 2023 actually looks quite a bit better. 
we got this really nice frosted finish on the back and you can't really see fingerprints too badly or really at all for that matter. The camera module looks really cool in my opinion and it has these nice boxy sides which in general this is definitely not uncommon or anything but I do think the build quality and everything looks and feels really nice and the phone does have a decent amount of weight to it. But keep in mind most people were probably expecting this anyway but the Moto G 5G 2023 is made entirely of plastic except the glass display of course so if you are in an environment where you might be a bit more prone to dropping it I would definitely recommend getting a case and even if you're not getting a case is never a bad idea but yeah again I do think the phone looks and feels really nice so if you are looking for a more affordable device that still looks pretty good the Moto G 5G definitely won't disappoint. Another cool thing here is that this phone does actually have stereo audio and what this means is basically if you're doing something like watching a video for example sound comes from both the main speaker and the earpiece giving you a much more immersive experience. So if you are consuming a lot of content and maybe you don't like to wear headphones all the time then with this phone compared to most others in this price range things are going to sound quite a bit better. But in conclusion my general thoughts about the Motorola Moto G 5G 2023. Now on one hand, I definitely don't think this phone is bad at all and in some areas like the photo quality for example and the overall design, I do think this phone is actually pretty good and especially considering US carrier deals, despite having a full price of around $249 factory unlocked, you most likely will be paying much less for this and maybe even getting the phone for free. So with that considered, if you're really looking for a basic 5G phone for more normal everyday activities like web browsing, social media, streaming content like videos and music, and maybe some light mobile gaming, for that kind of use, I do think this phone will be perfectly fine and most people looking for an entry level device like this are really not going to be disappointed. But if you're looking for a super nice display with a 1080p resolution, a bunch of camera features like 4K video recording and an ultra wide camera, and really lightning fast performance, then I feel like you're probably going to be a little disappointed because despite not having those things being kind of understandable here, since after all this is really Motorola's most affordable 5G phone, if your expectations are a bit higher then you might end up being disappointed. But again if you are looking for a really affordable 5G phone for more basic activities then I do think this phone is definitely worth considering. But this concludes my review of the Motorola Moto G 5G 2023. Again, if you want to learn more about this phone, definitely check out the description where I am linking to several other videos about it as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. But that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it and found it useful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to follow Kalipas Tech on Twitter and Instagram, and as always, I will see you in the next video.